In many cultures of the ancient Near East, kings were called images of the gods they served. This was partly because the kings were thought to have access to the gods' special presence, similar to the way the gods were thought to be present in idols. And it was partly because the kings reflected or personified the gods' will. Kings were supposed to learn the will and wisdom of the gods and then to enforce that will throughout their kingdoms. For example, in the New Kingdom period of Egypt, beginning around 1550 BC, the pharaohs began to be referred to as the images of various gods. And this practice continued well into the period of the Old Testament. We know that Amosis I, who reigned in the 16th century BC, was called the image of Re, the sun god. Aminophis III, who reigned in the 14th century BC, was referred to as my living image by the god Amon. And the god Amon Re said to Aminophis III, you are my beloved son, my image, I have given to you to rule the earth in peace. As we can see in these references, pharaohs were viewed as images of the gods because they ruled over the gods' earthly kingdoms. It was thought that the gods showed them special favor, maintained close communication with them, and expected the kings to carry out their will. We see something similar in Mesopotamian kingdoms like Assyria, although the practice was less common there. Various kings were referred to as an image of Shamash, the sun god, an image of Marduk, the ruler of the Assyrian pantheon, and an image of Bel, meaning Lord, which was another name for Marduk. And sometimes, they were simply recognized as the image of a god without the specific god being named. For example, in the State Archives of Assyria, Volume 10, Chapter 10, there is a letter from the priest Adad Shumu Usur to King Esarhaddon. Sometime between 681 and 669 BC, Adad Shumu Usur wrote, Man is the shadow of a god, but the king is the image of a god. In an earlier letter, Adad Shumu Usur had said that both Esarhaddon and his father, the Assyrian emperor Sennacherib, were images of Bel. So his point wasn't that Esarhaddon in particular was the image of a god. Rather, Adad Shumu Usur was saying that kings had a closer relationship to the gods than other people did. And therefore, kings were more similar to the gods than other people were. In Adad Shumu Usur's words, man is the shadow of a god, there may be a hint that the ancient Near East recognized varying degrees of images. They may have believed that kings were the truest images of the gods, but that people of lower rank were also divine images of a sort, the shadow rather than the actual image of a god. In any case, the uses of the term image of God help us understand how Moses' original audience might have received his teaching in Genesis. They suggest that ancient audiences might have looked at kings as the primary images of their gods because the kings reflected the gods' authority and will. And as a result, when they heard the term image of God applied to human beings, they might easily have assumed that it spoke of the office of king.